Thanks, Grady. Uh, great to be here in Melbourne, uh, shifting gears from uh, gold to white gold at the moment. Um, so, yeah, James Bay Minerals, as Grady said, we've been listed for just over eight weeks and it's been uh, really successful for us. So over the next 15 minutes, I hope to give you a good overview of why we selected the properties we've, um, that we've got, uh, the exploration program that we've got underway, and a bit on the market and how that will affect us as a business. Standard disclaimer, please feel free to go through that at your own leisure. So a bit of a snapshot of the company. So we have just under 35,000 square hectares of prospective lithium uh, assets in the James Bay region of Quebec. Uh, co corporate snapshot, 60.5 million shares on issue. Uh, a closing price yesterday of 38.5 uh, cents, which is sitting around 22 million market cap. So a really good day yesterday. Uh, top 20 shareholders hold at roughly 71% with board management, vendors and the exploration team holding just over 40% of that. So the team's really incentivized to do well. Some of the company highlights. Uh, we discovered spodumene on one of our pegmatites at our Aero property. We're a Canadian-focused lithium explorer, so we're focused on the James Bay region in Quebec. That, that's where we've honed in on, and that's where we want to stay. Uh, we've recently uh, acquired additional property, which now gives us 55 kilometres approximately of the lithium trend on that Legrand Greenstone belt, which is, uh, we believe is one of the largest in the region. And also, we're, the James Bay region is an area that is going to rival the Pilbara. I think we've seen the fastest rate of discovery over there of recent years, and we firmly believe that, that there is a lot more to come in that region. So the board, significant uh, lithium success and experience. Uh, so starting with myself, I've worked near on two decades in the mining space, mainly in senior commercial roles across mo multiple large organisations. And the lithium... Um, space, Pilbara Minerals, where I led the operational improvement projects, commercial side, and their phase two uh, project, which they're executing at the moment, as well as the commercial structuring for Tianchi Lithium, uh, their hydroxide plant in Quinana. I do get asked a lot, why would I leave some of these uh, quite stable roles in these organisations? And I have a real belief in the James Bay region and that why I can build something uh, with the group that we have. Gerardo Donovan recently stepped off the board of uh, Battery Age Metals. He's also spent near on six years at Pilbara Minerals where he led the Pilgangora processing plant into production and the integration of Altura operations uh, into the existing Pilbara Minerals business. Judy Baker, geologist, uh, where she spent eight years as, the, as a director at Namaska Lithium uh, and she led the discovery of the Wabuchi asset, which up until earlier this year was the largest hard rock asset in all of North America. And then Dina Segovic, COO and founding director of Pomero Group, who are leading a uh, lithium, lithium construction company uh, globally. So between the four of us, I think we've been involved in over 10 successful lithium projects. So a, a really solid board. Our management, so in country we've got Mark Fichetti and Marty Hubert both local to Quebec, they are the vendors, extremely incentivised to, uh, to, to make a discovery. I think between the vendors, they hold 9% of the company. They're the exploration team, really getting a lot of cut through in being able to get the best supplies for the cheapest price. And also they have existing relationships with the First Nation group. So extremely grateful to have them on the ground. And it's already working in our favour with the success we've had on the first eight weeks of our exploration program. Daniel Lockman, CFO, James Doyle, Company Secretary, and Matthew Hayes, our Corporate Development. So our assets are on the screen. Across the top, we've got four properties consisting of two projects. Across the northern part, Jewel, Aero and Aqua, which is our Legrand project, and then Trollers to the south. Now, we've been on a three-year, rough three-year journey to select these properties, and we'll run through why we've selected these. So, all these properties have th the three key ingredients for giant LCT pegmatites. Now, LCT is lithium, cesium, tantalum, and the first being that they sit within the right neo Ikean rock age. The second being that they sit on 
large to giant deformation zones. So the larger the deformation zone, the larger the LCT pegmatite. So through some of our properties, we've got deformation zones of up to one kilometre in width, which is similar to that of what Patriots got out to the east. And then the final key ingredients is being in proximity to greenstone belts, which as you can see, we've outlined them on the screen, they run through the properties as well. So building on that, if, if that, uh, those three key ingredients and that strategy is sound, we should see some of the properties uh, that have had success in the region uh, pop up on those similar trends. So if we have a look, starting at the east, we've got Patriot and their Corvette asset, which is a monster and likely to build into we believe one of the biggest, if not the biggest asset in all of uh, globally, as the current uh, drilling is only across one pegmatite. Winsome Canset, Mir Q2, working all the way down to Wabuchi, uh, which is owned by Namaska, where Judy, uh, our non-exec director, led that di discovery, as well as the Moblin Sayona asset to the south. So now that we ticked the three key ingredients we got listed, it was key for us to get out on the ground and start our exploration program. We've, we've been doing that and successfully uncovered two large fractionated field of pegmatites. So why is that significant? So globally, only 2% of the pegmatite populations are, are fractionated. So in being able to uncover roughly five kilometres in length and up to 500 metres wide at this corridor is extremely important for us. So that was a huge tick and that was within the first four or five weeks of getting on the ground. So now that we've got fractionated pegmatites, the next step was to identify where is the spodumene. So we were able to identify that in our Warhawk pegmatite and confirm that via visuals and the cleavage, which is, which is what you expect of spodumene, and also utilising a SIAPS libs machine, which gives you in the field uh, confirmation of lithium. So really ticked a lot of boxes since listing in the, in the first eight weeks. We've also had further confirmation, which we announced yesterday, that we've got further lithium mineralisation stepping back to the west by 2.5 kilometres. So early days can't replace uh, the LIBS uh, results with assays, but we're really excited by uh, what we've uncovered. So at, moving on to our Accra property, which is our most eastern, probably closest to Cancer, uh, Winsome's Cancer asset. There's been some fantastic activity uh, on the northwest border of our property, in that Finn Resources has uncovered quite an impressive outcropping pegmatite with large spodumene crystals in them. Uh, why is that significant for us? As, as they've stepped out to the west, they've had more, uh, more showings, which really shows a uh, east to west or west to east trend. And if you have a look on the screen, if it's moving east, which we believe it is, it moves all the way into our properties. So, that gives us another fantastic target for our team to get out on the ground uh, early next year. So because of that recent activity with Finn, as well as our own discoveries and some of the field work that we've been doing, we've expanded our footprint in that Legrand project by approximately 70%, up to just over 30,000 hectares. Really important for us to do that, as that, that Legrand lithium trend is probably the most premium unexplored lithium trend in the world, and a lot of focus will go on that over the coming years. Activities completed. So I was in Canada late September, early October, and was fortunate enough to meet the Deputy Chief of the Cree Nation at Wiminji in Arden Visor. It was a really great meeting, and it was great to put a face to a name, and they're really supportive of, our, of us being in the region. We undertook LIDAR and aerophotography, uh, Aeromag and spectr Spectromatic surveys have been run and obviously had a, a field team getting across the property. The original focus was going to be our dual property, but we got quite fortunate in that we just spotted uh, a large pegmatite from the road as we we're mobilising to site. So really fantastic IPO, great first eight weeks and we're, we're, really, we're really pushing on the story that we were hoping. Upcoming activities, so a lot of data generated from the field program and the aerial surveys. So we're now looking to take that data away, undertake desktop studies and really planning our next steps. These next steps looking like a, um, 
uh, drill program on the Aero property for the first half of next year. As part of that, we'll be submitting drill permits, tendering drill, drilling contracts, and then also planning in getting out on the Aqua property and following that, that trend that uh, Finn Resources are, has identified, and also getting out on what was our flagship asset of Jewel, and now we're looking like we've got a, a multi multi asset business up in that Legrand Greenstone Belt. So I thought I'd also touch on a bit of the market activity and lithium pricing and some of the, I suppose, misconceptions and different stories that are out there at the moment. I think everyone has their view on lithium. There's been a number of reports that have been uh, published in the last six to eight weeks, which I think uh, produce some quite interesting data, but I really think that the, the fact of them is in a dream world scenario. If you have a look at what the likes of Bank America, UBS, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan have produced, is they've taken all the dates from all the various studies that have been produced by all lithium companies, junior, mid-tier, major, and put them into a, into a data set and produced a supply chart. Now that supply chart is showing that there's an oversupply of lithium. Well, having worked in project development for near on two decades now, one thing I know, projects don't, don't finish on time, and when they do finish, they never meet the ramp up curve that they've proposed. So I think to, to believe these reports in that we're gonna have an oversupply of lithium, I think we're gonna be the other way. There's gonna be a substantial amount of headwinds for the lithium space, and the deficit will remain for a long time ahead. If you also have a look at the graph that we've got on the screen, it basically outlines that we're still having 10% quarter-on-quarter growth in the sale of EVs. I think last month, China sold the most EVs in one month of 1.3 million EVs. So the demand's still there, stocks in China are low, and I think we'll see that the price will start to creep up again in the next six to 12 months. Some more market activity, the M&A space, which is quite crazy at the moment, if you ask me, particularly in Western Australia. Uh, we've had some really large takeover bids made on the likes of uh, Lion Town from Albemarle, uh, SQM from uh, on Azua, and then some of the large iron ore companies and high net wealth Australians basically go in and take a significant stake, which is... Uh, blocked the Liontown one in one sense and is looking like it could go the same way with the Zua. Now, I think a lot of the international investors are going to start looking at this as a somewhat private, a private uh, nationalisation of Australian lithium assets and they're really going to have to divert their focus to other Tier 1 regions. Now, when you've got the likes of Chile nationalising lithium as well, which is the reason why SQM and Albemarle are looking in WA, they really only have one other place to go, and that's the James Bay region in Quebec. So I've ran through why they, that is perspective for the giant LCT pegmatites. There's also a lot of other reasons why Quebec is going to be the number one jurisdiction globally. It's the government support. So for every dollar spent on exploration, you can get up to 40 cents back. So that, that's phenomenal for a junior exploration company. So anything we raise and then we spend, we're getting nearly half of that back. On top of that, you have access to flow through funding, which allows us to raise at a premium and only dilute our shareholders by half. So we could go raise $5 million on flow through funding in Canada and only dilute our shareholders by two and a half million. These kind of government tax breaks and incentives are not seen anywhere else in the world. On top of that, you've got grant funding going into critical minerals. You've had the Quebec government uh, issue grant funding to North Vault, POSCO, to set these massive downstream facilities near Montreal. And they're going to need the product to feed that. So where's that product going to come from? External, until Quebec develops their own capability. Now that capability is going to come from the James Bay region, and that's where we sit. We're very early days but we have a massive land holding on, on the premium lithium trend. We're already having lithium showings and the story's only gonna get better. So keep an eye out. Thank you for coming, everyone. Any questions, come by the booth. So thank you very much.